over. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Labu Show. I'm your host, your girl Clarice Labu, and I'm super excited today to introduce today our guests. I have a couple, lovely, lovely couple. I'm talking about pastors Halonius and Tiffany Tebby. Hey, Hello. how are you guys doing? Good. Nice to meet you all. You guys look great. Thank, Thank you. you. Amazing, amazing. Wow. Well, it's just really um. Great to have you guys on the show today because I wanted us to talk about, you know, um, interracial marriage, especially in the church, you know, especially as Christians. Yes, I wanted us to touch on that and to, you know, kind of like have an open discussion, an open-minded discussion to share your story and and give a lot of advice to those watching out that we're going through. You know, difficulties trying to be with the one they love, the one God has sent for them, but they're getting backlashes maybe from family, from friends, from social media, and all that. So yeah, let's 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 go ahead. And um, let me just start by asking you, how has it been for you, my trip, Cameroon? <laughs> it's it's been good. It's been good. Uh, in the beginning, there might have been little challenges with right. cultural differences right. and. Me coming from the Western world and him coming from Africa, and there's differences how we want to do certain things or raise our kids or whatever. So there's been a few challenges in the beginning, but we've overcome them. Okay. So yeah. Awesome. And how long have you guys been married for? In August, we make us six years. Yep. Six years. The end of August. And six years. Three lovely kids. Yes, three kids. Amazing. Amazing. And how how. How did you guys meet? Can you share that story? Yeah, I'm so, interested <laughs> in hearing that part. <laughs> so before I came to the US, I had a uh, a lot of uh, relationship that didn't kind of go. And then I came here, I left, I was working in Los Angeles. And it was really the summer that I wanted to get married because I was turning, I just turned 30, then uh, 31. I was just going to tell you one. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't tell I was thinking like it was like time to settle. Right. Yes, I've actually with my past relationship long enough. Yeah. So but when I went to work and came back from work, uh, it was always dark because it was like during the winter month. Mm -hmm. So the only places in Los Angeles where I would meet girls would be at Cameroon parties. But I didn't meet the girls that I wanted. They were not born again Christian. I wanted a Christian woman. So I went online on ChristianMingo.com. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, we are into the couple. Yes. So, That's so, a good one. Yes. so I, I went there and I, I wrote to a few girls. I think one of the first girls I wrote to was one lady from Jamaica. She was a Jamaica. She was in the US, I think. But she was very interested in me. Okay. And uh, so I wrote to Tiffany. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey girl. I said some very hey. nice words. Hey. I'm like, you look like my missing race. Ah, it looks like giving, I found a girl I've been looking for. Had the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Believe me, she fell for it. She was like, wow. She just said I was a missing race. Yeah. Then she writes back to me immediately. Well, I waited for about I think, a month or two weeks, I think. Yeah. Yes, and I wasn't hearing back, but she wasn't a paid subscriber. Mm -hmm. So she had to pay before she could write. Okay. So she wrote back and she's like, oh, I saw you so hands on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. It. <laughs> no, that was exactly how it started. And then the first meal, I remember the very first meal, she asked me, do you love family? Do you love your parents? And wow. how are you close to family? I was like, okay. That's this what I wanted to be. Yeah. Yes. So I write her back and that was it. The ball kept rolling. Mm -hmm. We did it online for almost four months before we met. Yeah. Oh. Then after about the ninth month or tenth, I think we got yeah. married. It wasn't yeah. up to a year. Yep. And I was living in Seattle at the time. Okay. And he was in LA, so he came to Seattle to visit me for the first time and How was it? meet my parents. It was, <laughs> it was a little. I was nervous, of course. But <laughs> yeah, because meeting this guy that I just met online, oh, and yeah. so it was fun and it was exciting. And, uh, yeah. and were you ready also like when you posted your information on christianmingle.com was it like were you also like like he just said around his early 30s he was ready to settle down oh, yeah. looking for the one oh, were yeah. you ready at that time as well oh yeah because we're okay. around the same age so. okay like, she's yeah. a very old woman she's 30 <laughs> she's six months older than me so she's a cougar yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> he likes to say that yeah. he likes to say that <laughs> yes so you look younger girl okay by the point Yes. Wow, amazing. That's a beautiful story. That's a beautiful story. I, for one, personally, I'm single. Mm -hmm. So I've been single for a, quite a long time right now. I think almost eight years. And to me, I always like this internet thing 
but I've heard so many amazing oh, I promise stories. It works, yes. <laughs> I've met, I've heard so many beautiful stories. So hearing stories like this just well, like wow inspires yeah. me. And I know it's hard for people right now to really meet. Like you said, you kept going to parties when you're seeing the right person. Yes. And so this online platform is a good place for people to meet. Yeah. And there's no harm, you know, trying to see you know what's out there for you. So I, I really like that story. Now let's talk about the church. You know, it, it's 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 funny, and you'll be surprised that in, even in some churches today, um, they don't want. You know, I was listening to a pastor somewhere. Someone posted something on um, YouTube, and was this a pastor you know, on Instagram saying that he he would not wear a black man in his church. And he actually said it, and also warned the girls that were in the church. as a white pastor, of course, saying, "You when you go out there, don't man. bring a black man, because I will not let you in my church." Mm -hmm. He said it out that way. And not only that, even like in black churches, you see people they don't, you know, they don't want that, or they're giving people bad clashes for that. Talk to us, or talk to people that are watching, that are in your similar situation. How they can be able. I know you said there were challenges at the beginning. Mm -hmm. How can we, they can be able to stand firm in what they believe in? Like you believe that this is the man for me. This is the father of my children. This is the man I want to bear children with, and to still stand on that. Mm -hmm. Any of you can share? Oh yeah, for me, I I, I didn't have, like we really have a problem. For me, my mother wrote to me, and uh, she said I think it was WhatsApp or Facebook back in the days, six years ago. She was like, hey, you know what, white person. Those people believe in divorce. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was our first problem. Yeah, because I don't want you to get married and tomorrow you're not into marriage. marriage right. And uh, well, Tiffany, she had that from the very traditional family. Your parents have been married since 40 years? No, but my, my parents have been married almost 53 years. Oh, 53 wow. years, yes. Yeah, 53 years. Yes, and then their yes. grandmother, whom I met before she died. She died at 97. At 97, and still living with them in their house, not a group home. And they have those traditional values. So I talked to. Tiffany about it from the very beginning, I said, hey, we need to talk about something. What about divorce? It's like, oh no, it's, we can never use, she actually calls the D word, we cannot ever use that word. Wow. When we marry, we are in for, for life. Wow. And I'm like, yes, I'm also in for life, but I also want to tell you a few things yes. that are concerned for me. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm an immigrant from Africa, and I would have a lot of family members coming to the United States to mm -hmm. come visit. Mm -hmm. and so when they come, even if they are 50 years old, they would have to live with mm -hmm. us until they get on their feet. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? It's like, no, I don't have a problem with that. We have to have family wow. as long as they want to get moving. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to know. And guess what? After I married, I think I, my four or five of my siblings mm -hmm. came to live with us until they got on their feet near the window. But it was good to put those things that were afraid because right. for my culture, I'm like, hey, white people are not accepting of visitors, in laws, and all mm -hmm. those things. But you know, she's like, oh, she's okay with that. And it's been like that for us. And, like, if someone has to visit her, you don't need to make a whole long arrangement. They just show up, we'll open the door for you. She's very. Uh, Friends. Those are some of the concerns we had uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes, and for me, my own philosophy is if you meet somebody that you love, and my principle is that I follow the platform is Christ. He loved the church so much mm -hmm. that he gave his life for the church. And if I meet you, I love you, I'm going to stand for you and I'm going to love you. Mm -hmm. And I had all that relative who said, Oh my, white woman, you're finished. And someone I actually called, I called somebody when we were about to get married, a very good friend's wife, and I said, like, hey, I'm going to get married to this girl, his wife. She's like, oh, Stan, how could you make such a mistake? Darkness and light cannot go together. Oh that was so offensive. No, I was wondering who was darkness, who was light anyway. Yeah, and, uh, right. Yeah, and I'm really telling you that I'm getting that. married. The day is already scheduled, and you're right. telling me that's the worst mistake. Of course, ever since I got married, I've never called her again. Because so six years. Yeah. yeah, we're just like, hey, hi, on Facebook. But those talks were hurting. And then somebody went to the internet and sent me an anonymous email. I wrote, hey, you better sign a prenup because during the divorce, it's going to take everything. Yeah. So I was like, who wrote this message? So there were a lot of concerns. But again, I said, honey, if you want to run away from me, I'm going to follow you. I love you so much. And to be very honest with you, if I had to do it all over again, I will marry the same woman. She is a very awesome wife. Yes. You, all I said, you. Well, I was also going to say, the only thing, it wasn't like a big issue. The only thing on my side of the family, whatever, was my aunt. She was a little concerned because hearing stories we've yeah, heard about uh, immigrants coming and wanting yeah. to just get married so and then honey. stay in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and like abandon their wife yeah. or get green cards. Right. So she did a lot of research online. She was gobbling me all over the Googling place. Googling him, checking, <laughs> making sure he was a good, okay guy or whatever. Okay. And 
obviously yeah, background check on yeah, you. Yes, yes. But obviously to this day she loves him and yes. everyone in my family loves him and accepts him. So wow. so if you guys from what I understand is basically just communicate communication to the people that are concerned. That's right. For you know, concern and also standing your grounds. Like you said, this is the woman that you felt God had chosen for you. Yes. Right. And yes. if even if you were to choose again it was still gonna and the same for you as well. Yes, yes. Because yes. sometimes you see because of the pressure huh? all right, I'm I just turned thirty and I I receive a lot of you know, messages and yeah. people asking me when am I getting married. I, I think I had a breakdown this particular, the month before my birthday or the, my birthday month. There was one Sunday that I almost didn't go to church because I was crying in my bathroom because of so many like texts, messages. Because most of my friends or people that are around me are getting married or yeah. they found their fiance or whatever, you know, that's settling down and I'm still here. and. I, I, I went into my bathroom and I was like, Lord, please, this is too much for me. Yeah. Usually I'm a strong one. Yeah. People come to talk to me, yeah. and, you know, and I felt so down. And then I um, think what encouraged me was the fact that we are all different. That's right. We all right. have different timings That's right. and all of that. And because you, you said you were looking. For yes. the one going for, to parties, yeah. you know, can yeah. you, yeah. you didn't see, you didn't see them. Yeah. You didn't yeah. see them. Think right timing too is a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Just standing your grounds and who you yeah. think this person. And one thing I always tell people because I have a lot of friends also who are single and okay. saying, oh, I can't, I haven't met the right person yet. Oh, I just, I'm, I'm getting all these signals. People are like, when are you gonna get married too? Yeah. And I always tell people that the Lord has the right timing for you. You just have to be patient. And I know it's hard to be patient sometimes because you see Ooh, your friends and maybe you're like, ah, mm -hmm. when's my time? Mm -hmm. But uh, the Lord has perfect timing and you want to make sure that you follow his timing. So just know that the Lord is there and he's going to provide the perfect man for you. <laughs> so, yes. Let's talk about a little bit about you know some of the basic normal things that you do. You cook some Cameroonian food. Oh yes. Uh, can you name some, please? I make peanut butter soup. Okay. I make uh, puff puff. I puff do beans. Puff. God, if you do puff puff, then you're good. <laughs> you are good. Certified. You certified. I, I do fufu and okra. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, I'm trying to learn Aru right now. I'm okay. Like some other types of dishes, and I can do jollof rice. And yes. Go like girl. That. So go yeah. Girl. <laughs> I'm still learning some, and I'm pretty good at some of them. Wow! And you're really open to learning all of them. Oh yes, is it a big yeah. challenge. I love food? the food. I like to eat okay. it, so I also like to make it. And I know my husband likes it, so it makes him happy. And my kids love all yes. the African food too. Wow! Yes. Our kids don't really like American food. That's oh. true. Our it's all crowd, they, stick to they like the African food more than the American food. <laughs> wow! And do you sometimes maybe when you go out with your kids, you go out to maybe to eat or just to go out to have fun? Do you have people look at them a certain way or look at you as a couple a certain way? Or, you know, people just like, why, you know, why, why that, why, you know. And it looks like we have a little man right here with us. This is Brother James. Hi. Hi. Hey. He's so handsome. Thank you. Thank you. So, so do you, hi. Do you sometimes have people just look at you on like, and give you an uncomfortable look? Um, well, I don't know if uh, it's uncomfortable looks or anything, but mm -hmm. I, get, I know they're always uh, looking at us and um, maybe they're just admiring our children or whatever because we get lots of comments like, oh, your kids are so beautiful mm -hmm. or whatever, but I haven't noticed any negativity. Yeah. So okay. If there is, I maybe just not visually seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Amazing. Well, basically, I, I guess it's just to be comfortable with what God has given to you. That's right. You know, like, this is your family, you can't go back, you can't, you already give back to your children. Mm -hmm. You have to love them, teach them the values that you have, you mm -hmm. need to want to have them incorporate and go ahead with, and, and that's it. Wow. Pastor, have you been, have they been to Africa before? Oh, no, we're planning to go, and uh, just as soon as we're planning to go, mm -hmm. she got pregnant. And then we said, okay, after the pregnancy, we'll go, and then we got political issues. Mm -hmm. 
Then I go a little involved, so we well, just, we no, don't have fun when you go back. Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited to go. You're excited yeah, to go. Yeah, I want to go, go now, but I know yeah, I have to wait. <laughs> you have to wait a little bit. Yes, yes. Wow, this has been a really good show for me, especially having this little man here. Yeah. He's stolen the show from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just minding his own business, yes. and um, I'm I'm really happy that you guys came around to talk to you know talk to people. Talk to us, everyone is watching. I'd say I was because to me, I don't know who my husband is gonna be, who's gonna be white and Asian, whoever. Right. You know, I just to have that open open mind. Yeah. Open mind. And yeah. a pastor as a pastor, just say some last things to to um, ministers that tend to backlash people and their choices of you know, wife being maybe white or you know, Asian or from the Caribbean to wherever. Just yeah, yeah my, my own encouragement is uh, people like Martin Luther said that uh, we would have to link up with people based mm -hmm. on the content of our uh, mm -hmm. character, a little bit not by our color. Right. So, again, uh, in the kingdom of God, like God says, there's no Jew, no Gentile, mm -hmm. there's no black, there's no white. Right. We are all the children of God. Okay. Then, another one thing I would say is uh, for people who are still waiting to get married, I got married when I was almost 10, 31. So then, we, I think you already turned 31 at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, August. Yeah, so she was already 31, mm -hmm. and I was 30, oh. turning 31 too. So, once you get married, you'll be happy that you waited. Especially when God leads you to the right person. Yeah, yeah don't, because I got pressured a lot. We were like, oh my gosh, before you get married, my kids are going to be your groomsmen. Mm -hmm. And I had some kids that started, people were poking me all the time. <laughs> when I got married at my own age, I was 31 at the time. But guess what? I am very happy. The kids are young, I am very happy. That's the key. Thing. Yeah, they, they will get it to change diapers, they get it tired some night, they go cranky, and it's such a blessing. So at the fullness of time, it would come with joy. And people should be open. I strongly encourage online dating. The whole world has changed. It's communication. It's not like, oh, internet is some magical thing. For me, online dating is really cool because you have hundreds and thousands of women then you can pray, and God will lead you to the right one. Yes. Put on, even if you're a woman, put on your profile and say, "Hey, I'm out here." Like you're reading the Bible, there were women like uh, Ruth. Yeah. The, the mother in law just set her up to get things happen, right? Go show yourself there, and look. Even Esther, and we get those stories that come up. Make yourself available on the internet, and you pray, and God will lead you to the right person. Inspired yeah. by your stories, so hopefully, we, well, we have you guys again some other time. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Hello, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show to the like I did. And if you find yourself in a situation such as this, you know, happen to find love from the other side, just be open and pray about it and let God, you know, lead you and also communicate as well. So, um, make sure if this is the first time watching, make sure you subscribe, like, send us comments, and we'll be able to get um, more improvement and our production. Again, I want to thank you for watching the Labu Show. I've been your host, your girl Clarice Labu. Until come your way again next time, God willing, you have a good one. Bye-bye.